Hi everyone, today I want to talk about instances in Haskell and how GHC does a little bit of work to figure out what instance uh, you need at a certain a certain spot. So this is slightly more introductory material than sometimes I do, but, but I, I think that this might be interesting just to see exactly how, how GHC is working under the hood a little bit. Um, uh, before we get any further though, I'd like to just sort of highlight those of you who've watched my videos before see things look a little different around here. So previously I've been using Emacs with a very outdated setup. I have since tried to modernize. I'm, I'm still learning. This is Visual Studio Code that I'm working in um, with some nice features that we'll see as I, as I bop along here. Um, uh, and actually, if, if you see something in the video that you think I could be doing better in VS Code, please leave a comment letting me know because I'm just learning this and, and I might run into something that I just don't know how to, how to sort of do very well in, in VS Code. Um, okay, so Instances. So this is this is all about Haskell's class and instance feature. Um, if anyone is somehow wandering here from another language, uh, classes and instances mean something in totally different in Haskell than they do in other languages. So just they're just new words. Just don't 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 even try to relate them to like Java. No no no. Um, so here I'm going to declare a class. We're just going to call it C. Um, and here we're going to have one method in C called math. And it's going, and the and the only real point here of this method is to allow us to observe which instance we're selecting. Um, so we're going to start out with a, a simple example here. If I make an instance C int, uh, and I'm going to say where meth. I don't care what the actual number is, but it's going to produce the string C int. So this is going to tell us that this is the instance that's being chosen. So we can see an example of this. We'll have x equals meth applied to some int. Right? The actual int doesn't matter right? because up here it's going to be ignored. The important thing here for this video is what is the type of the argument because that's going to choose which instance. So here we only have one choice, but we'll see that's going to be that's going to be different soon. Um, okay, so first off, we see VS Code tells us nicely that X is in fact a string. So I'll just click that to get that type signature inserted. Um, oh, and as I point around, oh, that's very cool. I get all of these different little. Um, uh, oh, that's very cool. Ooh, I like that. I hadn't noticed that before. That's very neat. Um, but what I want to do here is I want to use the eval feature. And if I type three, uh, what are those, greater than signs in a comment, I can actually evaluate some code and it'll say what it evaluates to. So right, if I evaluate x, I get the string c int. And that's not a surprise here because if I if I pass undefined or something of type int to meth, that's going to use this instance. So I can make another instance. So instance c bool where math equals, I'm not going to write just c bool because that could be confusing, uh, a thingy with bool. Right? Now if I change this, instead of being an int, to a bool, and I can refresh, I see that it now evaluates to a thingy with bool. Right? And this is just showing that it's, it's actually connecting to the instances. So what's really going on here is that whenever I call math, as long as I call meth on something for which an instance is declared, let's try something else. Instead of bool or int, I'm going to try car. Ooh, now I get an error. So I can point here and see no instance for C car arising from a use of meth. So what that means is that there's no instance C car. I've said that meth, I can call it on any type A. That's what this A up here means. But it's not really any type A. It's any type for which I have an instance for C. Uh, so here I can call it for int, I can call it for bool, but if I try to call it for car, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run into trouble. Um, and that's exactly what we're observing here. But instance selection goes much further than just choosing one of these, um, if it's just int or, or bool. I can also have an instance for lists. So I can say instance um, c of list of int, where math this one is for lists. So now if I pass in here a list of int, whoops, did some autocomplete there. Um, now if I refresh, uh, oh no, running the contributed command eval command failed. Oh, probably because there's an error. Um, illegal uh, instance declaration. Oh, we need this thing, flexible instances. Oh, can I get to quick fix? Oh, come on, that's not very nice of you. Add flexible instances. Okay, it did that. Now can I refresh? Oh, look at that, it works. It's nice, this modern stuff is fun. Um, so, so here, now we're getting, we're getting this instance down here because I'm passing list of int, and of course that's different than it would be for just int. 
um, which I get C int. Um, okay, so so far so good. But but actually, usually when we have an instance for a list, we don't want it to just be list of int. We actually probably want this to be list of anything, provided the anything is itself an instance. Oh, you know, what? let me leave that off for now. Um, and we're going to say this one is for lists of, and then I'm going to append that to whatever the result is for uh, for something of type A. So I'm going to call meth again on undefined of type A. Well, right now we're going to get some kind of error, ambiguous type variable, blah, 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 blah. The problem here is that GHC by default doesn't connect this A with that A up there. And maybe if you've been noticing when I've been highlighting things, let's see, will this work? If I highlight in, it shows me other ints. If I highlight this A, is it clever enough? No, it's not very clever. It highlights that A as well, but that's actually unrelated. Um, but what I instead want to do is I want to turn on scoped type variables. And what scope type variables means is now this A will come into scope and I can mention it over here. So it's still getting an error. No instance for CA arising from the use of meth. So what this is saying is, is this header here, this instance CA, is saying that I'm going to define a, a, an instance for all lists of any type A. But in the body here, I'm, I don't want it for any type A. For example, list of car would be no good because I don't know what meth applied to something of type car would be. That's no good. So instead, I really need this to be any A such that there's already an instance. So let's see. Um, we have no instance for. There's some documentation. Ooh, there's a quick fix. Is the quick fix good? Disable deferred type errors warning. No, I don't want that as my quick fix. No, 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 no. Uh, I saw the light bulb earlier. Light bulb? Couldn't I get the, oh, what does the light bulb do? No, it's that one silly one again. Okay, no, 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 no. What we need here is we need a context that says that CA uh, holds. So that means that this is going to work. So now we have an instance for C list of anything as long as that thing is itself uh, um, an instance of C. And that makes this it sort of looks like a recursive call. It's not really recursive because it's going to be called at a different type. But this call to meth, it makes this one work. So let's let's see this in practice down here. So if I have down here, meth is now applied to list of int. Let's see, and I refresh. This one is for whoops, lists of c int. And that's because I'm getting this string here. And then here when I call undefined of type a, well, a here is actually int. So it's going to use this instance up here. I can change this to bool, and if I refresh, then we see that in the output. Nice. If I change this to car, then I get an error saying no instance for C car. It doesn't say no instance for C list of car, even though that's really what I've asked for, because it can see, oh, I already I do have this instance for lists, um, and, it, and that instance for lists of A says that I can reduce the problem of needing an instance for a list of A to a problem where I just need an instance for A. And so the error I get is that there's no instance for C car sort of after that reduction. This is a nice thing. Um, OK, so let's see. how Where can we go from here? So there's a bunch of places we can go from here. Um, so one is I want to say, well, this is the general. Um, we can have a, a general instance for lists. But maybe I want a specific one for C list of bool. And here, I'm going to just say bit field, right? A list of bool is kind of like a bit field. Um, now down here, oh, we still get an error because there's no instance for C car. Uh, if I type int here, all is well, and I can refresh. That's all good. If I type bool here, I'm going to get another error. Overlapping instances for C list of bool arising from a use of meth. So, oh, don't, uh, okay, it's still here. Matching instances. So maybe it wants us to use the general instance for all lists, or maybe we want to use this instance specifically for list of bool. The choice matters, right? In one case, I'm going to get an output of bit field, and in the other case, I'm going to get an output of this one is for list of blah, right? So my choice of instance matters at runtime, so we don't want GHC to just sort of make it up as it goes along. And so that's why it issues an error here instead of just choosing one. If in this case we do want it to just make that choice, we can label this as an overlapping instance. 
So with the, we do that by writing overlapping here. And now all is well. By saying overlapping, what it's saying is, is that if, if I'm in this case here, where I want list of bool, if this, if this instance is labeled as overlapping, then it says, oh, well, we're going to allow this one to take precedence over more general ones. And now if I refresh, I get bit field. An alternative to labeling this one overlapping is I can label this one as overlappable. So we can label the general one as overlappable or the more specific one as overlapping. Either one works. Um, the other thing we can do is we can write overlaps. If we say overlaps, that's both overlapping and overlappable. So if you don't want to care very much which one you're doing, you just say overlaps and, and, and all as well. But that's not all. So let's go back. I like it more to label this one. This is overlapping. But now down here, what if instead, let's instead of x here, let's change this to f. And I actually don't want a type signature. Let's get rid of the type signature. And instead, we're going to say f of y equals meth. Uh, how do I want to do this? I want to say meth of list of y. Ooh, does autocomplete. I, I really don't like that in editors. I don't know why people do. Um, I have to find the feature and turn that off. I will, I'll, that, that'll be easy to find. Okay, so if I say this, now I'm going to get an error. So here, this should definitely be doing some list, but we don't know what. Oh, non-type variable argument in the constraint C list of A. That's not what I was expecting. Let's see, what if I do the quick fix? I'll add flexible contexts. Oh, and it infers a type C of list of A to A to string. Oh, I don't want that. Barg. Okay, we're going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to write that. Oh, that's sort of terrible what it inferred there. I don't like that at all. That's sort of a bug. Um, so, okay, so first off, what have I done here? I Normally, you would expect y on the left to be the same thing as y on the right. But we can see here in the in the sort of the Haskell language server that's that's causing this um, uh, these messages, we can see that it's not quite so 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 it's not quite the same. And the reason is for something called the monomorphism restriction. Um, so there's another video about the monomorphism restriction. But let's just say for now, if I put it over here, then GHC is going to work a little harder to find instances because of this thing called the monomorphism restriction. Look, you can look in the description for a link to another video on that. Um, so here, it's giving me this type. Let's ignore that. That's a bug. Instead, let's a oh, redundant lambda. Oh, I don't care about redundant lambda. I care about overlapping instances. Um, so here, what it's saying is that I don't know what the type of y is. And indeed, if I knew that I had c list of bool, I would choose that one. But I don't know whether this y is going to be a bool or whether it's going to be something else. And so GHC refuses to commit. Um, and instead just issues an error. This again is a good thing that we're getting an error because I'd much, much rather have an error than have some behavior at runtime that's hard to predict from the way I've written my code. So what we need to do here is in order to commit to something, even though we're not really sure what, it, whether, um, whether Y is going to have type bool, is we have to use incoherent instances. Mm. So now instead of just saying overlapping, I'm going to change this and change this whoops, to incoherent. And if I do that, oh, now we get ambiguous type variable prevents the constraint from being solved. Oh, oh, I see why that's happening. That's because of this constraint. It reduces the C list of A, and then it doesn't know where to go from there. Let's just change that. And then this one is for lists, and we'll just comment this part out. Okay, so now we're going to get um, hlint, which is something that tries to, to fix style problems in our code, is is complaining. But actually, this this is we get a blue line here, not a red one. So this one will execute, and if I refresh, oh, no, of course, x is not in scope. I don't mean x. I mean f. Let's see, applied to three of type int. Let's see what happens there. We get this one is for lists. What's interesting, though, is if I say f of true, we should sort of expect it to say bit field, 
but we still get, it's really is refreshing, we still get this one is for lists. And that's because we said incoherent. It means that GHC is going to commit, whoops, to using this more general instance even before we know what the type of the argument is. And that is really incoherent. It doesn't really make any sense. And that's why we needed to use this incoherent here, which you probably shouldn't unless you really know what you're doing. And even then, you probably shouldn't. Um, uh, okay, so that's some fun with instance selection. There's one more detail that I want to talk about in this video. Um, and let's undo some changes. Can we undo a bunch of changes? Um, let's see, I want to be here, yes. And, oh no, I don't. No, I want to get rid of all of this stuff. Let's get rid of all this stuff. And instead, let's just look at instance C list of int, where math lists of numbers. Okay. So here we are. Now, if we go down here, we still have ambiguous type variable A0 arising from use of meth. Now, you might think that because there's only one instance there's for lists here, that that could mean that we infer that Y whoops, must have the type int. But that's not how GHC works. It'll only commit to an instance when there's no other choice. And right now, maybe I'll write another instance later on for something else. If I want GHC to commit, then I need to actually have A here. Now, things are well again down here. If I refresh, oh, we get this variable on scope thing again. Let's have this, and now I can refresh. List of numbers, good. But actually, I still only want list of int. And so what I can do is I can add an extra context here to my instance, saying that this works for um, list of A as long as A is int. But what it means is, is that GHC will commit to this instance as soon as it sees that we need an instance for a list. And then it will decide that A should in fact be int. Um, but we're getting some error. Oh, we need to do a quick fix. I'll just add type families. Why not? Okay. So now that I've done this, now let's see. I think, aha, the inferred type for F is now int arrow string. And that's because I've called meth here with a list. This instance says that if I want an instance for a list, use this instance, it matches any list, but then it tells me that A has to be int. This twiddle means equals in type language. Um, and so this is surprisingly different from putting the int over here on the right. Um, and, and, and so this is a trick sometimes that we can use to guide type inference, sort of move something from the right of an instance over to the left. Um, I think that's all we've got for today. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.